Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from XeroAutomation.com and welcome to another video of Xero Automation. And today we are going to talk about Selenium event firing web driver in C Sharp. So there have been so many comments in my videos on Selenium C Sharp that I have released pretty long time before asking how to work with the event firing web driver in C Sharp language binding. Because there are some discussion on the event firing web driver in Java language binding and I have already discussed about the event firing web driver in Java as well as in Catalan Studio, Catalan Studio 7, like how the event firing web driver is being consumed and is being supported within Catalan Studio. We already discussed about that in our earlier videos. But in this video, we are going to talk about the event firing web driver in C Sharp language binding and we'll see how it works. So event firing web driver, if I have not heard already, it's actually a class which is actually available in selenium.support namespace, which has many different web driver events for performing various different operations. So these operations are kind of very, very helpful if you are looking some sort of verbose information out from the web driver. So these event listeners are very, very helpful if you need to get a specific event to be triggered based on certain action in a web driver. And these are very, very handy if you are going to be debugging your web driver or understanding what happens if a particular test fails for some reason. So the following web driver events available within the event firing web driver are these. As you can see, the event handler actually has what is called as a navigating event handler, navigated, navigating back, navigated back, navigated forward, element clicked, element clicking, element value changing, element value changed and things of that nature. So there are many different event handlers available and similarly there are many different event handling methods available. So these are very very helpful if you would like to take a screenshot during the failure or if you want to take what's happening based on a particular URL has been navigated or something like that or maybe if you want to get what happens if a particular element has been clicked, what is the actual value of it and what happens if a value is being changed, how is the particular element looks like or if you want to see if the script is been executing, what is the status of the particular script or the page at this particular point of time, if you want to take a screenshot of, of the particular page, you can do that as well. So all these kind of options you can do using this event firing web driver, which is kind of very, very neat looking event firing web driver events available within Selenium web driver. So how to invoke these event listener is the next question which community ask and they need to know how this has been invoked and how it actually works. So basically the event firing web driver is completely different from how you do in Java language binding because in C sharp the syntax is a little bit different. As you can see you can do something like event firing web driver is equal to new event firing web driver and then you can pass a particular driver in here and then you can call the event listeners using these operation like new of the event handler of a particular argument and then you can write the firing driver navigating firing driver navigated and, and firing driver navigated forwards and things of nature so then you need to write these handlers something like this so this is where is the handler of that particular event something like this so i have just put some kind of an console message so that we can see this particular method is being invoked or this particular handler is being invoked during that particular point of time. And the next question comes is like your code is now already kind of getting populated with these kinds of information. If you want to keep this like a separate file or something like that, if you want to even more customize this, you can do something like this. You can create your own custom event firing class and then you can inherit from the event firing web driver and then you can write the code something like this as you can see in here. So we are going to be discussing about this way as well in this particular video. And as that said, the example is, for instance, if there happens any exception in the code execution or the web driver throws any exception and if you want to capture the particular exception by taking a screenshot, you can do something like this. As you can see, I am capturing the web driver exception event arguments where I'm going to take a screenshot and then I'm going to save the particular file as a PNG file into the bin folder location. So this is one such example that you can actually use to take a screenshot if there is any exception happens. And of course, you can do the exact same thing in an exception handler, but this event handler is even more verbose and it's even more immediate that 
if there is any exception it happens and if you have already handled that exception in your code but still you get the screenshot because this event handler is invoked automatically for you. So let's quickly see everything in action and discuss how things work. So for that I'm going to flip to my Visual Studio 2019 IDE. Alright, so today in this particular demonstration, I'm going to be using the code which we have already discussed in our Selenium 4 Netcore project, which is available in my repository in Execute Automation. So if you go to the Execute Automation and search for this Selenium 4 Netcore repository, you can see this particular code. And this particular code is actually being part of the video that we have already discussed in our Execute Automation, like performing network interception using Selenium 4 with C Sharp and Chrome driver. So this is the same code that we have discussed in this particular video and we are going to be extending that in this particular video as well. This one. So as you can see what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one more test method in here and let me make it a little bit bigger and I'm going to write the method in here and then we'll start writing the implementation over this particular method. So as we know that there is something called as event firing web driver within the selenium dot support package so if you go to this particular uh, package we have the selenium web driver so if i just go over here i guess i have not installed the selenium dot support package so i'm just gonna go and i'm gonna install the dependency by the manage nuget package and i'll search for selenium this one i'm gonna install that so now you can see that we have the selenium dot support package over here. So once we have this particular package, we can now call the event firing web driver. And if I hit control dot, you can see that it brings me up the open QA dot selenium dot support dot events namespace. And once I hit enter, it will be added over here. And now I can just do like this event firing web driver is equal to new event firing web driver. And this expects me to pass the parent driver. So the parent driver is nothing but our driver that we already have, which is nothing but the Chrome driver. So I'm just going to pass the driver over here. And once I have this particular driver, then I can start doing a lot of things with this event firing web driver itself. So as I said to you, the event firing web driver has these many event handlers over here. So these event handlers are something which is responsible for doing various different operations for us, something like navigating, navigator and stuff. So we are going to leverage the same power over here. So I'm just going to call what is called as a navigator. And then for calling or invoking the event handler, you can see it says press tab. So I just can just do that and see magically Visual Studio 2019 can add the code for us over here. So you can see that it has this particular shorthand of calling the event handlers for us like this. And now we can do the implementation. So this event handler is going to be the navigated event handler. So I can just write a console message over here. So console dot write line. I can just say navigating or navigated to e dot URL. And similarly, I can then add some more event handlers like event firing web driver dot navigated back or navigated forward but before actually adding this particular event handler in here i can first show you how the code actually looks like if i just try to do a navigate to the back and go to url and navigate to a forward and things of that nature so i'm just going to say event firing web driver dot navigate and you can see that I'm not using the driver this time rather I'm using the event firing web driver to perform the operation for us because this is where the events are going to be captured for us and then I can do the back and forward operation as well so I'm just going to save this code and now if I try to execute this particular piece of code you can see that I have not handled the back and forward operation so you cannot actually see any sort of events there coming in so just going to execute this particular piece of code. It opens the browser. And you can see that the code has been executed successfully. If I go over here, you can see that we get an 
additional output for this particular result. So once I click this, you can see that it shows me only the navigator to this particular URL. That's it. It doesn't show really any other operation, but this particular information that you are seeing in here is actually coming from our event handler that we have written in here. So that's the power of the event handler itself, guys. This is how the things are actually happening for us right now. Similarly, now I can just do a navigator back plus is equal to press a tab, just adds me up things over here. And similarly, I can just add one more thing for the forward. So event firing web driver dot navigating forward plus is equal to and tap. It adds things for me. And now I can add them as well. So I'm just going to add the text for the navigation uh, of the forward operation. And similarly for the back operation as well. That's it. So this way I can now add the verbose information if something happens with the particular uh, URL. So now if I try to run this particular code, you can see that the browser has been invoked. There you go. And you can see that I get this particular message. But I actually don't have the text coming in here, something like the URL that I'm actually looking for. So if I want to get this particular URL, all I have to do is I just need to change this to e.driver.url and similarly this one will be e.driver.url because this particular uh, URL will actually not have that particular information. So let me try to execute this once again. You can see that the browser got opened. And now if I open the additional output, you can see that I actually get this particular information as well. So basically, the event actually doesn't really has the particular uh, information on the URL. So you need to call the driver to get this particular information. If not, you will not get the URL of both the back and the forward information. So this is how you can actually do that. But what if I want to do something like I need to enter some value into that particular uh, application and then I want to see if that particular value has been correctly submitted or not. So I can write a code something like this by sending a username with a send key of admin into the text box. And then if I hit the submit button, then I need to see if the login is actually happening. But I want to see what happens if I enter any value, whether the value that I have entered is actually correct or not. So if I want to do that, I can also see those verbose information as well, which is kind of very, very handy. So for doing that, I'm going to write one more event handler this time, uh, which is going to be element value changed. And this element value changed event handler is going to give me what is the particular value which is actually coming during that particular execution, something like this. So once you type a value text to the value of admin, then the text box should have the value as admin into that. So we can instantly check that using this particular event handler. So if I try to run this again, and now if I open the result, you can see that the element value changed to admin. So once you enter the username as admin, then the event handler will return you what is the particular value that you have entered into the text box, which is also coming over here into the result. So this is how you can work with the event handler in Selenium C Sharp. And the next operation that I'm going to be doing is to create a custom class with all these extensions that you are seeing in here. So the custom class that I'm going to be creating over here is going to be custom event firing handler. And then I'm going to import the event firing web driver class. Hit control dot. There you go. It's coming in here and it says that we need to actually implement uh, or generate a constructor with that particular information. So this is kind of very, very important. And now we need to override some of the information which is available within this particular event firing web driver. So basically the implementation is already sitting in here for us, but I need to override these methods like on element clicked or on element clicking 
or on navigate it or navigate it back and forward and things of that nature. So in order to do that, I'm going to write our own custom code so that I can actually overwrite those information and I can handle those situations as well. So the code is going to look something like this. As you can see, the code looks very, very similar to the code that we have written earlier over here, but just that this is not the code that we have written for the event handler. Rather, we are directly overriding the method which is already available within the event firing web driver class. So you can see I'm directly overriding everything over here, but I'm going to write the custom class this time instead of the event handlers that we have written in here, right? So now what I can do is instead of overriding the existing method, I'm going to write one more method in here. So web driver event listener custom class. And this time I don't really need to use these event handlers that I have written. So I'm just going to delete them all. And rather I'm going to be calling instead of this new event firing web driver, I'm going to call the custom event firing handler over here. So this particular custom event handler is the one that we just wrote this one and I have passed the driver over here. That's it. So once I do this, this particular code is going to perform pretty much exactly the same kind of operation that we performed earlier, but just that we don't really have to write these code within our class over here. Rather, we have already written them all within the custom event firing class itself. And the last operation that I'm going to do before winding up this particular video is to go again to the existing method, the web driver event listener. And here I'm going to capture the exception if it happens and then take a screenshot. So for doing that, I'm actually going to go in here and then I'm going to call the event uh, firing web driver. And then I'm going to call the exception thrown. And this particular method is actually going to have the exception being thrown and then take a screenshot for us. So I'm just going to take a screenshot if there happens any exception and then store that particular uh, screenshot to me in the bin folder of my web driver. So now in order to make our test to fail, what I'm going to do is once I hit the submit button, I'm actually going to once again try to enter the admin value so that it actually throws me an exception uh, and it also take a screenshot for us. So I'm just going to run this test once again. So basically it will run, uh, it will open the browser and then it performs the operation that we, which it did before, but just that this time it's also going to throw us an exception. So you can see that the test has got failed. Basically uh, you can see that we get the result as well. Uh, and then once I go to the folder in the file explorer, and if I go to the bin folder and debug folder, and net core, you can see that we got an PNG file in here. So once I open this particular PNG file, you can see that I actually have a screenshot of this particular page saying there is an exception in our application. So you can see this is the same page that the screenshot actually been captured. So this way we can also capture any screenshot if there happens any failure during the particular execution. So these things we can able to do only using the event firing web driver. So that's it guys. This is how we can work with the event firing web driver events in C sharp language binding. And this is pretty much exactly like how you do in the Java language binding, but just that the way that you invoke these event handlers are a little bit different than compared to Java. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.